Zahi Hawass, a prominent figure in the field of Egyptology, has dedicated his life to unraveling the mysteries of ancient Egypt's rich history and cultural heritage. However, his career has not been without its share of controversies and debates. While he has been a key advocate for the preservation and study of Egypt's archaeological treasures, there are those who have raised questions and concerns about his actions, decisions, and management of Egypt's antiquities. In this exploration, we delve into the intriguing question. What is Zahi Hawass hiding from us about ancient Egypt? This inquiry delves into the various allegations, controversies, and criticism surrounding his career and leadership within the world of Egyptology. On number six, we have repatriation of artifacts. The dispute surrounding artifact repatriation has been a prominent feature of Zahi Hawass's career in Egyptology. The demand for the repatriation of Egyptian cultural objects taken from Egypt over different historical eras, such as colonialism and archaeological expeditions, lies at the heart of this complicated subject. According to critics, these items are often stolen without adequate authorization or documentation, and their removal is a kind of cultural appropriation and colonialism. During his stint as Egypt's antiquities minister, Hawass was a key figure in these repatriation attempts. Nonetheless, this is a complicated legal, ethical, and diplomatic matter. Many museums and organizations across the globe contain Egyptian items in their collections that have been there for decades, if not centuries. Repatriation supporters say that these items are part of Egypt's cultural legacy and should be returned to Egypt as a matter of justice and respect for national sovereignty. Opponents sometimes argue that the items were obtained legally at the time of their removal and that their continuous presence in museums across the globe provides for greater accessibility, study, and preservation. Furthermore, others feel that attempts at repatriation should be governed by mutually agreed upon international agreements and ethical standards. On number five, we have King Tutankhamun's touring exhibitions. The issue of King Tutankhamun's traveling displays has been a topic of contention throughout Zahi Hawass's career. These exhibits feature the presentation of objects from King Tutankhamun's tomb in museums and locations across the globe, with the goal of bringing ancient Egyptian history to a worldwide audience. The management and consequences of these shows, however, have prompted a number of issues and discussions. One critical problem is the preservation and protection of these rare items throughout their lengthy journey. Critics claim that shipping such fragile and old antiques exposes them to hazards such as destruction or theft. Some have questioned whether the advantages of displaying these treasures to foreign audiences exceed the hazards to their long-term preservation. Furthermore, financial elements of these shows have been discussed. Some opponents have highlighted concerns regarding the admission costs for these shows and how the cash produced by them is used. They are concerned about whether the financial profits will contribute adequately to the conservation and safeguarding of Egypt's greater cultural legacy. On number four, we have allegations of self-promotion. Allegations of self-promotion have placed a pall on Zahi Hawass's Egyptology career. This complicated problem reveals that Hawass has been accused of participating in actions and conduct intended at developing his own brand and popularity, sometimes at the cost of scientific and academic objectives, throughout his professional career. Critics contend that Hawass has done an excellent job of establishing himself in the public eye, typically via media appearances, films, and book release. They argue that, in addition to advancing Egyptology as a whole, his efforts have improved his own position as a charming and media-savvy celebrity. Some have questioned if Hawass' motives were solely scholarly and scientific, or whether he desired personal recognition. Supporters of Hawass, on the other hand, recognize his substantial contributions to Egyptology and say that his media presence has played a critical role in spreading awareness of Egypt's cultural legacy. They say that his public appearances have increased public interest in and support for Egyptian archaeological projects, which is critical for the preservation and research of ancient sites. On number three, we have handling of archaeological sites. In Zahi Hawass's career, the treatment of archaeological sites has been a source of worry and controversy, raising questions and worries about the protection, management, and excavation of Egypt's rich historical legacy. 
This multidimensional subject centers around the management of archaeological sites and the myriad issues related with their upkeep and investigation. During Hawass's term as Egypt's Antiquities Minister, critics questioned the efficacy of site management. They claimed that certain archaeological sites were not effectively safeguarded, resulting in difficulties like looting, unlawful excavations, and structural deterioration. These issues highlight the vital necessity for thorough site security and protection in order to avoid illegal artifact trading and the destruction of historic buildings. There have also been disagreements concerning the methodology and procedures used in Hawass's archaeological digs. Some opponents argue that the desire to produce high-profile findings for media attention has harmed the scientific rigor of archaeological research. They contend that the emphasis on dramatic discoveries may have come at the price of careful and meticulous investigation, thus undermining the academic worth of digs. Nonetheless, it is important to note that Hoas' tenure saw notable advances in archaeological discoveries and site protection. Some say that his leadership has helped to the preservation and investigation of several ancient monuments, allowing the world to learn about Egypt's rich past. On number two, we have allegations of political ties. Allegations of political links have been a problematic feature of Egyptologist Zahi Hawass's career. This controversy centers on views and claims that Hawass maintained close links with the Egyptian government and that these connections impacted his actions and choices as Egypt's antiquities director. Critics contend that Hawass's apparent political affiliations fostered a sense of prejudice and lack of objectivity in his capacity as Egypt's antiquities director. They claim that his tight relationship with government officials and politicians prompted concerns about whether his actions and choices were influenced largely by political considerations rather than strictly academic or cultural purposes. Furthermore, some argue that these purported political relationships may have impacted the allocation of resources and priorities within the discipline of Egyptology, perhaps favoring particular projects or persons at the cost of others. Concerns were expressed concerning the equal allocation of money and support for Egypt's archaeological research and cultural preservation activities. Supporters of Hawass, on the other hand, claim that his involvement with the government was important to campaign for the conservation and preservation of Egypt's cultural legacy. They claim that the government's participation was critical for obtaining resources, enforcing laws against illicit excavations and antiquities trafficking, and resolving larger site preservation and heritage management concerns. On number one, we have accusations of autocratic leadership. Accusations of authoritarian leadership have been a source of contention throughout Zahi Hawass' stint as Egypt's antiquities minister, sparking discussions and disputes concerning his management style and decision-making procedures. Critics contend that Hawass' leadership style was marked by a perceived lack of openness and inclusion. They claim he had complete authority over archaeological sites and information, often making unilateral choices without enough consultation or input from other academics and archaeologists. This gave the impression that he exerted autocratic power over Egyptology, restricting possibilities for other researchers and professionals to contribute to and participate in archaeological initiatives. Concerns were also expressed regarding the possibility of partiality and resource allocation. Critics said that Hawass' leadership may have resulted in the priority of certain projects or persons, perhaps at the expense of other significant components of Egypt's archaeological history. This generated concerns about the impartiality and fairness of resource allocation and research opportunities in the sector. Supporters of Hawass, on the other hand, claim that his leadership style was required to simplify decision-making procedures and speed measures in the face of different problems, such as unlawful excavations and site preservation. They argue that his firm position was critical to safeguarding Egypt's cultural legacy and preserving calm on the ground. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the world of Zahi Hawass and the intricacies of ancient Egypt. If you found this exploration intriguing and informative, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more captivating content. And remember, the mysteries of history are endless, and there's always more to discover. Stay curious, and we'll see you in the next video.